Welcome, everyone. I'm so pleased that you could join us tonight uh, here with Andrea Klein. She's in London joining us from, <laughs> from London this evening. Thank you so much. We're very grateful for your time, Andrea. Andrea is an integrated energy healing coach. She's an energy therapist, and she's here to talk to us tonight about EFT, about tapping, the technique that um, has brought us here tonight. That's a very popular subject and much needed uh, at this time in the global situation. So welcome, Andrea, and I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for, for um, attending this talk and giving me the time to present this amazing tool to you. Um, so I would like to, to uh, tell you tonight a little bit about what EFT is, um, what you can do with it, what we can use it for. And then we also want to have a little application. So I want to take you through a little bit of tabbing for yourself so you get a flavor of it. And hopefully we get a little shift at the end of that for all of us. Um, so when we do the tapping part, I hope we can be interactive because it will be great to, to kind of know how things feel. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that when, when we get to that in the in the in the talk um, so first of all maybe just a, a tiny bit about me and how eft found me really um, i used to i used to be in in the film industry i used to be a very a very you know business busy businesswoman traveling the world trading rights um, and uh, what kind of stopped me in my tracks was um, a breech baby that came along and changed everything because somehow my body knew this baby wanted to be born naturally and that was a whole journey of discovery and eventually I had my baby at home and it set me off on a bit of a journey of I'm doing things not like the mainstream um, and so it set me off on all these explorations of alternative therapies um, and eventually I ended up finding the one that I wanted to study, which was energy healing originally. And when I set myself up in my practice in 2010, just shortly after that, I encountered EFT. And EFT was like, it unlocked something additional that was so massive for me. And I found it simply by being on the internet and coming across the World Tapping Summit. And that's an annual event at the time, it was, I think, the third one that these guys did, um, and they've been running ever since. So this was 2011. Um, and, um, you know, where I was just tapping along with these experts and stuff was shifting to me that hadn't shifted in three years of healing training, which was really, really profound. Um, and I immediately started to use it with my clients, and I could see that they had shifts. So it was just such a, such a, immediate and intense introduction to it um, that I was that I was totally convinced and um, I, I've, I've, I've integrated it in all the other work that I'm doing and that I learned and it's never left me so I am as excited about this tool 10 years later that, than I was when I first encountered it so so what is it actually um, it's a funny combination of Eastern and Western wisdom in a way, because it uses energy and the concept of energy and the, the meridians um, as, as, a, as they are taught in, in, in Chinese medicine. And it uses the Western concept of positive psychology. Um, so when we do EFT tapping, we are stimulating points that would probably be familiar to every acupuncturist. We're stimulating points on the energy system in the energy body. Um, and by doing so, we are actually stimulating the energy of our, of our energy system. So we're doing way more than just stimulating something in the body. We're actually moving energy around. Um, and, you know, if we, if we connect to the... Um, notion that actually you know if we, if we look at quantum physics that everything in the universe even this material body is actually 99.999 it's 39 after the dot it's a uh, space filled with energy 
um, then we begin to see how much what we do with our energy actually influences the 0.0013 percent of matter that we actually are. Um, so energy is hugely important in, in, in what we are. It, it makes up the vast majority of what we are, even though we experience ourselves as solid matter. Um, and you know, whether we call it ki, whether we call it chi, whether we call it prana, um, it's in, 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 Eastern, in Eastern medicine and Eastern philosophy and Eastern religion, the awareness of energy has been um, hugely present and very central to everything. So we're combining that part, the energy part, with what we call modern positive psychology. So the roots are actually, they go all the way down to NLP, um, Ericksonian hypnotherapy, NLP. Um, in the second half of the last century, there were quite a few people who had developed psychology um, and psychiatry way on from Freud and found more practical ways of application and more solution focused ways of application. Um, and uh, uh, so out of NLP, like, there were a few people who tried to develop that further, make it even more powerful, more potent. Um, and there was a guy called Roger Callahan who um, was the first one who introduced tapping to all the verbal processes that um, that the psychologists used, um, and he but he had a very clunky, very very heavy system in the way that for every emotion or for every problem he found a different he called them algorithms. So he found a different sequence of of um, of, of points to stimulate. So so it was it was very difficult to teach to anyone. And it was a very, a very difficult system to, uh, to apply. Um, and it was then picked up by a guy called Gary Craig, who actually was an engineer by training, very solution focused guy who found that when he reduced the points to the set of points that we are using now, they are a kind of a one size fits all set of points that we can use to stimulate with any emotion. And it helps us to move the emotions through and um, and unblock the system. Um, so, um, what also seems to happen with EFT, and that's a little bit my take, and having looked at other um, modalities that are very much related, very similar, I don't know whether any of you has heard of EMDR, the eye movement therapy. It's actually very, very similar because the processes used in EMDR are literally the same. It's only that the stimulation that we do in EFT, we stimulate the energy system in EMDR. It comes through following the, you know, doing the eye movement. Um, there is another, there is another um, system that's similar. It's called Havening and they have actually, that was, that was uh, developed by two doctors and they've got quite a lot of science under their belt. Um, where instead of doing the tapping, they actually do a stroking. So when they work with um, traumatic memories, they do a stroking. Uh, and what happens, they, they know, they have, they have um, found the scientific proof that in the synopsis, in the brain, the actual molecule that encoded the traumatic memory physiologically becomes dissolved by revisiting the memory with a physical sensation that gives the person a sense of everything is well, I'm not in danger anymore. So there, there is a lot going on with EFT uh, because we're doing all these things. We're calling up certain mind processes whilst we're having a somatic engagement of the body whilst we're stimulating energy. So I call it sometimes a, a multidimensional process because we are involving feeling feelings. So that's the emotional brain. We are involving the prefrontal cortex because we are naming the feelings. And as such already, that creates new neuronal um, structures in the brain by doing it. 
at the same time we're focusing on how it feels in the body and we're naming that too and we're moving the energy and the blockages through the stimulation of the um, meridians of the energy points so there's an awful lot going on in an EFT session and it all works as a holistic um, one whole um, it all it all reinforces all these different parts reinforce each other and I believe that's what that's what makes the method so powerful um, and so what we can also do with EFT because we focus on the body but we also name things so we also engage our prefrontal cortex it actually um, to me when I when I did some training with um, Peter Levine and Bessel von der Kolk about trauma modern approaches to trauma work I realized oh my god what we do in EFT takes all the boxes there because we we have we have different ways of engaging with the trauma we can engage via the soma via the body just how things feel and by naming them dissolving them um, we, we 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 can have a body focused approach but we can also have a more mind focused approach where the person goes in with the memory um, and something more cognitive but we will still move the energy and maybe also come to a place where something becomes dissolved in the body. So it's either bottom up from the body up into the brain or from the brain down into the body. The, the method links up all part of us. And that's why it's such a holistic, I call it such a holistic method. It links up the brain, frontal, frontal part and emotional part of the brain, the body and the energy. Um, and you can, you can actually find a way in through each of those parts. So it's very flexible in its application. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of where it comes from and how it actually works in the body. Um, a word about emotions, maybe. Um, emotions, emotions, are a little bit like weather systems when we feel emotions we can we can we can feel a wave of joy or we can feel a flaring up of anger emotion actually always wants to move and when it moves it moves through and then it's out and very often what we don't allow in everyday life is for our emotions to actually really move through and express and move out very often it may not be appropriate or we have been conditioned in childhood that is not appropriate to show or express certain emotions so we tend to hold emotions inwardly quite a lot um, and the more we hold them the more we actually block the weather system you know the high wants to move through the tempest wants to move through but actually, we're not allowing them to move through and out. So we're holding them somewhere. And, and you may just feel, if you just pause for a moment, close your eyes and notice where do I hold my emotions? And there's no no right or wrong answer, but we can actually, you know, we, we hold them a lot in the pit of the stomach, don't we? We also can hold them a lot in the throat. That's often uh, where it can really sort of choke, choke us, where emotions can choke us in the throat. We can have uh, a heaviness in the chest, or we can have uh, a heaviness in the in the back of the between the shoulder blades or in the back of the neck. Um, so there are there are loads of places where we can where we can hold our emotions in the body um, and working with that awareness um, EFT is wonderful to actually if we have the awareness of where the emotions are and we begin to name it and tap through them we can actually begin to move them to move them through from these places where we have stored them um, there's another principle a core principle to EFT that's really important before we we get started in 
you know, trying it out. Um, and that is just the paradox of that we need to accept what we want to change. So it is paradox that what you resist persists. The more energy we give to something we don't like, the harder it is to shift. Because we're giving it energy. And no matter if, if the energy is attached to a no and I don't want that, we're actually giving that thing energy. And so in the EFT, part of the EFT verbal process of the setup is an affirmation that repeat, we repeat three times where we actually set up the problem and we say, even though I have this problem, whatever the problem is, I love and accept myself unconditionally with it. And that sends a message to the unconscious that it's okay to have it. And in that moment, we start to resist. Something relaxes, something lets go. And in that moment where you actually let go, where this something lets go, that's when change becomes possible. And again, it is actually very reminiscent of ancient, ancient Eastern wisdom. Um, if any one of you has ever done a Vipassana meditation, for example, it's all about sitting and learning to accept everything that is with equanimity. So with meet everything with total acceptance. No craving for something else, something that's perceived to be better. No aversion to, you know, if whatever is painful or uncomfortable, but coming to that place of complete acceptance, equanimity. And so when we start an EFT process on whatever issue we work on, we almost invoke that sense of equanimity by saying, even though I have this problem, I love and accept myself anyway. I sometimes change it to, I forgive myself, because sometimes before we can even love and accept ourselves, we have to forgive ourselves for something. But it's always a juxtaposition of the perceived problem and a complete sense of acceptance and compassion with yourself. And that actually, the more we allow that, the more it talks to our unconscious and then it allows unconscious material to just come out in the process that follows. The, the more we're getting out of the way and we're really accepting the problem that we actually want to shift, but we're just accepting it for this moment, it becomes ready to shift. So that, that's just paradox, the paradox of, you know, what you resist persists and accepting what we want to change. That's really, really important. Um, so yeah, what can we use this technique for? So we can use it to manage emotions, to shift emotions, to clear out long harbored toxic emotions, to change beliefs about ourselves, to go back in time, so that's where you really see the, the, um, the relation with NLP. They were the first ones to bring in timeline work where they, where they went back in time and changed stuff in the past and cast their minds forward and, and did some forward projecting into the future. All of that we can do with EFT. We can even go into past lives. If, you have, if you're working with someone who works a little bit more shamanically with EFT, it, it, it can become an, an access point to you know, entering into a past life memory or retrieving lost soul parts, which are basically split off in a child's parts. It's just the same, different words for the same concept. So you can work in, in many creative ways to, um, to apply this tool to techniques that, that have been, well, used for millennia, again, if we look at these shamanic things. Um, and but also things that are that are used in mainstream, you know, the um, the integration of split off child parts is, is is bread and butter of any normal psychotherapy. So so it's um, it really it really spans a very wide range of applications. So it's emotions and it's beliefs um, and it's trauma. And if you look at what, you know, what what does trauma trauma actually causes a lot of beliefs or a lot of beliefs come from. You know, there was an emotion at some point 
um, usually actually quite early in childhood. And, and then there is a, there, there is, there is a, a childlike reasoning behind it. So, you know, if I do that, all will be well, or, you know, I'm, I, I, I mustn't, I mustn't shine too much because otherwise, you know, my sister will be jealous and I'll be a bad girl or, you know, <laughs> beliefs, beliefs can actually be surprisingly old. Um, and a method can help us to dig down to the root of a belief that may hold back someone in adult life when it was a belief that was formed very early, very young, and therefore has a very childlike reasoning but doesn't apply anymore. We also need to know Bruce Lipton, who you may know, biology of belief, uh, author of biology of belief. He, he tells us that until age seven, um, we actually absorb all the beliefs of our parents and all the conditioning. We absorb it straight into our unconscious. So everything that our parents live for us as examples, um, everything that we are told, we just completely uncritically download it before the age of seven. So we're like sponges for beliefs. And these beliefs, we don't even know that they're there because to us, that's reality. That's, we, we don't even question our reality. And um, maybe again, maybe later in life, through a method like EFT, we may come to, to, to the understanding that, oh my God, what I thought was reality is actually just a belief. It is just a set of thoughts. And what if my thoughts are not the truth? Um, and all of these things can be incredibly freeing. Um, and, um, you know, the, 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 the dissolution of toxic emotions that have been there for a long time, for example, you know, if we swallow anger, 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 it turns into resentment inside our cauldron of swallowed anger. Um, so resentment is actually hugely toxic to the person who carries it. It's never toxic to the person or it's hardly toxic to the person who it's directed against, but it is very toxic to the person who actually harbors it. Um, and if we never manage to express it, if we never manage to clear it, number one, it will erupt in jibes that are, that are disproportionate to the trigger very often, because there is a huge disproportionate amount of stored up emotion inside. And whoosh, when there is a trigger, it will just come out in a very uncontrolled manner. Or um, we, we may just, it may just turn toxic, 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 and it congeals and begins to materialize. So if we're holding it in our stomach, it may turn into a stomach ulcer. So, so, so do, these are the these are the 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 moments where what is only held on an energetic level eventually turns into matter. And so, it's so much better and so much healthier to go and tap the emotions out whilst they are still emotions, whilst they are still energy, before they turn into matter. So, it can really help us prevent illness by clearing out all that toxic emotion. And it can also, is actually also applied on physical symptoms. So even if the body is already showing physical symptoms, we can actually reverse them to a certain degree because we can tap ourselves out of physical symptoms as well. It's absolutely possible. So you can tap yourself out of a headache. You can tap yourself out of, out of, out of stomach cramps you can tap yourself especially especially if there is an emotion attached to it you can tap yourself out of an anxiety attack you know where your heart would be racing where where you know your blood would be rushing all these things you can tap yourself out quite easily so it's absolutely working on physical um, symptoms as well so yeah that's um that's that's the the, the, the range of applications. Um, what I would really like to do with you is find something that we can tap together as a group. I would like to, um, well, I'll demonstrate the points for you first, and then we'll find something where we can all tap together in a, in a neutral enough way that it can apply for every person. So we will find words and we will find something that is not too specific, 
but that maybe concerns us all. Um, and then we we'll just tap on that and see how that affects us. But before we go into the tapping, I just want to demonstrate how to do it. Is that all right? Okay. So we're starting off with this affirmation that I mentioned. And when we do the affirmation, actually, maybe I should just sit a little bit further away so you get more. When we do the affirmation, um, the setup phrase, we tap with our dominant hand on our non dominant hand, and we tap the karate chop point. So we tap the side of the non dominant hand with the dominant hand. And it doesn't matter whether you tap with all fingers or just with two fingers or with three fingers, and it doesn't matter if you tap hard or soft, and it doesn't matter if you tap slowly or, um, or very fast. In fact, it will always change according to the emotional charge that you have. If you have a lot of emotional charge, you're likely to tap a bit harder and a bit faster. If you're already very relaxed or if you're very depressed and your energy is low, you, you may just uh, tap a little, bit, a little bit more weakly and all of it is okay, yeah? You can also actually tap on all the points in parallel because they're so they're, they're, they're mirror each other. So you could tap with two hands if you wanted to, but you don't have to. I tend to tap with my dominant hand. Um, that's, that's easiest for me. Um, so when we do the karate tabbing, that's when we do this phrase. So even though I have this problem, this feeling, this thing, this issue, I love and accept myself anyway, even though I have this and I feel really stupid having it. Yeah, whatever it is, I forgive myself for that. And I have compassion for myself. Even though I have this problem, I love and accept myself unconditionally. Yeah, so it's a sort of a three time repetition of, you know, naming the problem and accepting ourselves with it. And then we begin to tap through the points. Um, the points are inner eyebrow and then outside of the eye. And we're actually tapping around the eye socket. So we're not quite on the outside of the, of the temple, but we're sort of where the eye socket, where we can feel the edge of the bone. And then again, the, the lower eye socket. So we're going round the eye almost like a question mark because then we go down. So it's almost a question mark shape. So inner eyebrow, outer eye socket near the temple and then under the eye on the eye socket. And then we go between lower, between upper lip and nose. And between lower lip and chin. And then we go to the collarbone, sort of just, just around the collarbone. I always tap sort of one finger in the little notch and then just tap around the collarbone. So I know where my collarbone is. And then we go to brass trap or monkeys, monkey scratch. So it's kind of the side of your torso, yeah. And again, you can do both sides or you can just do the side that you prefer and you can, you can wherever it's most comfortable to tap, but it's sort of the height of the brass strap on the eye, on the side of your torso. And then the last one is sort of where your, where your crown chakra is. So the middle, the middle of your head. And that's what we call a round. And when we go round, around like that, so let's start again, inner eyebrow, outside of the eye under the eye, between nose and lip, between lip and chin, collarbone point, side of torso, and top of head. And we tend to do a few rounds on each aspect of the problem, the issue, the feeling. And after a few rounds, we have a check in and see whether it has shifted in any way. Because another useful thing that we do in EFT is we, we try to kind of measure, um, especially when we do it ourselves or um, when we're beginning with this method to, to, to measure a little bit, is it really shifting? We measure our 
our subjective units of distress, suds, we call it in EFT. So how bad is this feeling on a scale of zero to 10? Zero is no problem at all. 10 is, oh my God, this is really, really, really bad. Um, and so after a, few, after a few rounds, we will check in and see, has it shifted in any way? So whether we're tapping on something physical, you know, has the symptom got a bit lighter? Or, you know, if it's a knot in the stomach, has the, have, has the knot in the stomach got a bit, has it eased off? Or if it's a weight on my shoulders, has it eased off? Um, or if it's actually a rage, has the rage, has the rage got better? Um, has the rage sort of almost like very often the rage dissipates quite quickly and under rage, usually there's a lot of pain. So when, when we go through em emotions in layers and layers and layers, what we might find is, oh, rage is on the top, but under the rage, there is pain or there is grief. And pain and grief will be driving the rage. It's a bit like, you know, if you, if you poke a bear with, you know, with a, with a, with a painful poker, the, the bear will be angry, but you know, what's the anger? It's, it's caused by, it's actually caused by pain. Um, and then, and then, so as we, as we discover a new emotion, a new emotional flavor, we would set, we would set a new phrase up because we're always trying to name the feeling as it arises and accept that new feeling or, you know, an issue might, you know, one part of an issue might move and another part might reveal itself. So we are then, we're then naming the new the new aspect that has emerged. And so as we do this, we actually also become clearer and clearer in our awareness and our consciousness, because as we go through this process, more and more material from our unconscious reveals itself. As we clear layers from the top, more layers from the unconscious have space to appear. So those are the principles. Ah, and towards the end, so when something has cleared and where it feels like, oh my God, I've cleared a lot, that's when we turn the whole thing around and we start to tap in positive affirmations. So um, in the beginning, we never start with positive affirmations because we would just be trying to have this pressure cooker of negative toxic stuff that we actually want to release. We don't just want to, to crack, you know, to paper over the cracks and put some positive affirmation on. What we want to do in EFT is we want to we want to really clear out the bad stuff first, and then there is space, and there is so much more space for the good stuff to go in. And then the good stuff can hold, take hold, and be internalized much, much more deeply because we've cleared out the bad stuff. So at the very end of the process, we end on a positive note. We turn it around. Right, so that's the explanation. And now we need to um, find something that we can tap on. And I'm wondering whether I can have some thumbs up maybe if I, if I, um, if I float a few ideas. So one thing, um, a physical thing that we, um, we do often with groups who don't know each other and we don't wanna go into you know, all the personal pain um, is just to check how deeply can I breathe right now and notice whether your breathing is a little bit constricted just because, you know, we've had a busy day and we're maybe not 100% relaxed. And so we will be tapping on the symptoms of constricted breathing and then just see after a few rounds whether the breathing has opened up, whether the rib cage has opened up, whether our breathing has gone deep, more deeply. Um, and I've been thinking because we're having, we're living in such anxious times, whether you would like to combine it with just sort of a general sense of tapping on anxiety, anxiety, not knowing what the future will bring. Is that, yeah, is that something we should, we should bring in? And it's probably, it's quite good. It's probably quite likely that it will actually go hand in hand with a bit of constricted breathing and that we might find once we've let go of some of the anxiety, also our breath has opened up. So what I, what I would invite you to do is to just check in now oh, in terms of how anxious you feel, give it a rating 
of zero to 10, zero being, oh, I'm completely okay, and 10 being, Ugh. And then also, actually, with the breath, or in whichever way you feel the anxiety, maybe you feel a weight on your shoulders, maybe you feel your anxiety more in your stomach, and it's a churning in the stomach. So in whichever way the anxiety expresses in your body, just tune in and get a sense for it, and maybe also give it a rating, so that at the very end, we can just compare ratings and see whether you've gone down a few notches. Okay, so I invite you to speak the words after me, um, because the verbal process is important. It's an important part that you hear yourself say this in your own voice, and that you say the words that really engages the front part of your brain into the process. So we're naming the feeling, and I'm giving you suggestions. If you, if you have a more precise way of wording what is going on for you, use your, own, use your own words, please. Just use my words as a guide, but, you know, try them on for size. If you have something that fits better, by all means, go with your own words, yeah? And sometimes you might surprise yourself in terms of what words you hear yourself say, if you really say your own words, because that's how the unconscious bubbles up all of a sudden you may hear yourself say things that you didn't even know were there. Um, those are magic moments, you know, you, those are pearls of wisdom that, that we're granted where, where, you know, we can really work with, with that wisdom that comes up from deep within. Um, so only use my words as a guide and, and open up to your own inner wisdom, open up to your own unconscious to, to guide you through this process as well. And we're setting an intention that, you know, we will all borrow benefits from each other, that we will all, you know, make this process work for us in our own special way. Right, so let's just set it up. Even though I'm feeling so anxious right now, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though this anxiety has been building and I don't know what the future brings. I love and accept myself with all my fears. Even though I can feel I have stored this anxiety in my body. I forgive myself for that. And I have deep compassion for myself. And now we're tapping through the points. And when we tap through the points, we just say little reminder phrases like this anxiety, this insecurity, not knowing what the future will bring. So much insecurity, feeling unsafe, feeling out of control, and repeat repeat the words or, or allow your own ones to bubble up, but allow your voice to to voice what's inside. This anxiety. This fear that I can feel physically. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my, wherever you feel it, chest, stomach. It's churning 
or it's heavy, it's constricting my breath. This fear that's choking me. This anxiety about life at the moment and being out of control. So much is happening and I'm not in control. Feeling anxious. Feeling worried. Not safe. And I can feel it in my body. Feeling it in my stomach. Feeling it in my chest. This churning feeling. This constricting feeling. As if my anxiety is crushing me. This crushing feeling. Makes me feel scared and out of control. This anxiety and all its physical symptoms. Feeling this worry feeling this fear. Feeling it in my body. This anxiety. And next time we're up on the head, just stay on the head, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. <sighs> so as if you are, ah. Oh, all this anxiety that you've knocked loose by putting your focus on it, give it a deep out breath. And I would absolutely, so now tune in, tune in, and you can actually, to tune in, you can go back to your karate chop point and just sort of relax your whole system and tune in and just feel if something has changed a little. If something, if something has shifted just a tiny bit. Now I would actually love to hear from you. <laughs> has it, okay, let's do it that way. Has it already gone down a notch or so? If yes, give me a thumbs up. Okay, it's gone. It's 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 three out of four. Okay, so with Judy, we would need to continue, um, and um, and uh, you know, obviously, if I knew your situation more more directly, I would ask you questions as to what's driving it, and we would go into that. Um, but actually, if something is persistent or if something hasn't gone down enough, we also can simply repeat it and we set it up as, let's just go for that round, even though it's not quite gone yet. I love and accept myself anyway. Even though this doesn't want to shift because it's so strong. I forgive myself for that. And I love myself unconditionally. Even though this is really sitting inside of me and doesn't want to shift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. I love and accept myself anyway. So you've, you're actually feeling more relaxed. So, so if, if, we, if we want to, 
if we want to shift something more, we just sort of go and do another round. Yeah. But if we actually have relaxed into something and, you know, on purpose for demonstration purposes, we can't go into deep rabbit holes for everyone tonight. So we want to keep it at a nice place. So let's say we've all come down a notch, maybe. So we then just want to turn it around. So what if I could actually trust life a bit more? So then, you know, we, we turn it around with a consciousness raising question that just allows our unconscious, our, our unconscious, by the way, only answers questions. It does not listen. It actually doesn't listen to affirmations. It listens to questions. So whatever you want to seed in your unconscious and in your creative mind, you actually formulate it as a question. And then you let that question go. You don't try to find the answer straight away, but you seed the question and you allow your creative mind and your unconscious mind to bubble up with the answer. And so what if questions are really good for that? So what if I could trust the universe? What if this current chaos is just a precursor for something new being born that's actually better than the old? What if this could be the most exciting time in my life and in 10 years time, I'm looking back on it and I will laugh? What if I can trust that the universe has my back? You know, yearning is really good. Yearning is really, really good. Um, uh, Veronique, it's, uh, it's, it's a sign of release as well. So burping, yawning, um, they're all, they're all signs of release. Um, so, so that's, you know, when I do Qigong, I burp all the time. Um, so, so, so it's actually, it's, it's blocked energy channels. They release their energy like that. So, uh, so, so it's really wonderful if, um, if this little tapping routine has actually made you yawn. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so let's just, um, let's just, so we can actually, so even though I had all this anxiety, I now choose to allow more trust. So let's set this up. So we're tapping this in. Even though I was anxious before, I now choose to allow more trust into my life. Even though I had so much anxiety, I will now choose to believe that the universe is working in my favor. And then, you know, we've, we've, we've emptied out the, the anxious feelings and then you can just put in, yeah, what, what if it's working in my favor? What if all will be well? What if everything will be even better than I can now imagine? What if my creativity can't even come up with how good it's going to be? What if I have the brightest future and I can't even imagine it yet? And what if my unconscious is going to come up with all these brilliant ideas? And what if 2021 is going to be the year where I start to fly? I choose to be open to the possibility that change can be wonderful and safe and gentle and joyful. I choose to be open to the possibility that it can bring me more joy than I can even imagine right now. And that it will happen with ease and grace. Choose, I choose to trust that joy, ease, and grace will be my companions. 
for the year, the decade to come. And then when we come to the head the next time, again, take a deep breath in, breathe in all the good stuff, breathe in all the trust, the joy, the ease and the grace. And on the out breath, have a sentence that it's actually trickling down inside of your body. So you're really absorbing it. <sighs> like you're absorbing it into your tissues, your bone marrow. You're really, really internalizing, absorbing it like a sponge would absorb warm water. All this good, all this goodness that is just around the corner. If only I trust it, if only I allowed it. Lovely. <laughs> that brings us to the end of our session. So what I would like to say also is you can use this tool as as an emergency tool. So let's say, I don't know, you know, something really bad happens or, you know, let's say, you know, you 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 witness something. Sometimes I have to watch it just when I watch the news because the news are so upsetting. Um, that sometimes I just start tapping as I watch the news to 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 to, to actually manage this uh, reaction that that's that's coming up in me, yeah. Um, or if somebody really upsets you in the moment, take yourself out of the situation. I have I have a, a situation with elderly parents who are sometimes you know very very stubborn and not very fair because they're not judging they're not judging the world in in you know like they used to when they were when they were younger and fitter so so they can be they can be a bit a bit harsh and offensive sometimes and and when i feel oh i'm taking something personally i take myself out of the situation and i and i tap on you know even though this is really hurtful and even though i'm really pissed off he said that um and you can actually you know actually the stronger you express the charge the better it is so you know if somebody really really pisses you off curse fine you know because you're not doing it to them you're not hurting anyone but you're actually channeling this charge out and you know call them whatever names you want to call them um, as you tap through and you will find that after a few rounds of tapping through that feeling will just puff away and it is like the storm has passed so when the storm has passed better weather can come in and you will find you find your compassion again um, so it can be it can be used as a as a, very much as a as a as a as a quick tool like that. Or if it's children, you know, getting on your nerves. Um, that's you know, my, my son is out of the house, so now for me it's elderly parents. I'm at that stage of life. But you know, my son used to upset me too. And um, so you know, tap just tapping on an emotion as it comes up and as it's really strong. And just a few rounds will will move it very quickly because before it even takes hold inside of you and turns toxic, it's actually very, very easy to dispel. It's more difficult to to dig out the really old toxic ones, you know, but as a self help tool for the, the quick ones, the fiery ones, you know, the immediate reactions, it's a wonderful tool to turn that round very quickly. Yeah, so that was my closing my closing um, tip. <laughs> wow, wow, that is really powerful, really powerful. Um, it's a really powerful thing to do. I can see if you feel an anxiety attack coming on yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, or even before that, if you can. Yeah, absolutely. So if you get the first, if you get the first uh, uh, symptoms of an anxiety attack, you'll tap on that. And in fact, you can even you know, I have people, I have clients who, who were very fearful of the anxiety attack and they'd come to me and work with me one-to-one -one 
And so before we even tap, tap on the symptoms, we tap on the fear of the fear. Because, right. because it's, you know, it's the fear of the fear that's, that's, and, you know, it's the fear of the fear that's not allowing them to use the underground or because, you know, they're, they're so fearful that the attack may come. And they were also fearful to come to me because they thought, oh my God, is that going to provoke an attack? So actually there's the, there is Russian dolls, like the Russian dolls, layers of fear. Um, yeah. And we were tapping through the layers of fear until we came to the real fear. And actually that was really small. <laughs> <laughs> and so once they saw that, that the original fear was small and that the fear that they were afraid of is more like a shadow play. It's a paper tiger. Right. right. And then and then actually that whole fear construct collapsed. Hmm. And um, it, it's similar, um, actually working with, for example, fear of flying and stuff like that when you work on a, on a phobia um, and if you break it down and you work on all its different components. And at some point, the whole construct collapses. So it can be really, really powerful, even for quite big things. But yeah, the earlier you start with it, the better it is. It's also great to teach children. Um, and I've taught it teenagers at school. And I've taught it, you know, before they go into exams to calm down exam nerves. Wow. Great um, idea. Yeah. yeah. And even, you know, the night before or, you know, when they when, when, when they get really frustrated because they have to revise, um, let out the frustration, you know, so you can really apply it to any emotion under the sun. Mm. Wow. And you wow. can tap with small children, you can actually, you know, small children, if, if they don't want to be tapped on, you know, you can get them to tap on their teddy bear or, you know, you can actually also use creative ways of surrogate tapping. So there's, there's just there's just endless possibilities to play with this tool. And what a great tool it is. <laughs> I know that I will be uh, tapping and swearing in the, in the coming <laughs> <Yeah>. days. <laughs> oh, wow. I am so thrilled, Andrea. Thank you so much for sharing all of this uh, wonderful information with us and guiding us through this experience. It was really powerful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm so And pleased. of course, Andrea is working virtually as we all are now. So Andrea is working globally. If you want to get in touch with her to delve into this more, uh, more deeply and more, more um, particular to you and your situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And um, so, you know, there is another World Tapping Summit coming up in February. And I'm going to send the link to the organization that does it to uh, Sharon so she can she can share it out. Um, and there is also a, um, a, a little tapping manual, a little PDF um, that um, that we can share with you to remind you of how the process works. So, uh, so you can definitely try and do this at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And thank you so much for that too. I'll make it available um, by email or if on my website. Yeah, okay. fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, there is a question. Let me just, may I ask what's the difference between EFT and Reiki? Okay, um, so um, Reiki is simply opening up your channel as the practitioner and channeling energy usually through the hands so it's a very simple process of just channeling energy but with reiki it's actually quite undirected there is a there's it's it's, it's working with trust that universal healing energy is intelligent and it will know where to go so it's a much more undirected process where we just allow this energy to come in um, the person at the receiving end of it will experience deep relaxation. And again, sometimes a becoming aware of things, it will just bubble up. The deeper you go into relaxation, the more stuff will just bubble up. And it may actually bubble up a few days afterwards. It may not bubble up during the treatment because it may need some time to work through. Whereas with EFT, as you've seen, we're actually, we're, we're, we're much more verbal, we're engaging the, the the mind a bit more and um, we're, we're, we're trying to open these gateways to the unconscious by actually we're getting in a trancey state so if we do EFT um, you know if you if people who come to me for an EFT session 
um, you know, you will get relaxed and your brain waves will probably go into a very similar pattern to the brain waves that you have when you receive Reiki. Because you, you go into a state, they're probably going into theta. They will go from beta, which is your normal functioning, rational brain wave. Alpha would be when you're studying or when, we, when you're relaxed. And then theta is when you're in meditation or before you go to sleep. And theta is the brain wave between waking and sleeping where we access unconscious material. Mm -hmm. So you go into theta waves when you receive a healing, but you also go into theta wave in a, in, in a well-facilitated EFT session. Mm -hmm. um, so anything else? Um, actually, yeah, someone wants to study EFT, uh, Veronique, um, I can really recommend um, the, um, uh, an, an EFT place in, in London, um, um, uh, the EFT Centre, uh, but the, the two owners and coaches are both EFT masters, so they were a part of this EFT development from the very beginning, they're very experienced, and they're running all their courses online now, so you can do it from Paris. It's the EFT Center. Shall I, shall I just write the message in? Um, Sue Beer and Emma Roberts. And actually, they were my teachers too. EFT Center. Sue Beer. Emma Roberts. There you go. Uh, can you do EFT on pregnant? Absolutely. Um, that's interesting. I actually, you know, I had Reiki all through my pregnancy, Judy, um, and it, <laughs> it, it, I don't think, I, I don't know why it could damage the baby. Um, uh, that, 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 that is, I, I, I wouldn't share that view um, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very positive energy. Um, and um, yeah, I, I actually, my acupuncturist at the time, was doing moxibustion because I had a breech baby. We were trying to turn the baby. I was doing everything. So I had Reiki and I was hanging off the sofa upside down and <laughs> nothing would turn him. Um, but uh, 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 yeah, I had Reiki during my pregnancy and it, it, I don't think he was breech because of that. <laughs> I don't think it harmed him in any way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's all. Is that all the questions? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, you, for this uh, wonderful evening full of information and education. Thank you so much, Andrea. We're very grateful. Thank you for hosting, Sharon. That was great. My pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Yeah, good night. Bye bye. <laughs>